So the UK has been very successful in taking coal off the power system. At one point in time, it was the vast majority of electricity production, and at this point in time, it's a very small fraction. And Drax has been a major player in making that happen. So what we've done at Drax is starting in about 2005, we started to investigate how we can convert the power station from running on coal to running on biomass. Now at its peak, Drax was the largest coal-fired power station in Western Europe, producing about 6% of the UK's electricity. And now we're pretty much off coal completely. We still produce about five or 6% of the UK's electricity, but all of that's done using sustainable biomass, which is a renewable fuel. So actually we're now about 12% of the UK's renewable power. So Drax has had fundamentally a very significant impact on the UK's ability to come off coal. So the first thing that Drax has done has convert our power station from coal to renewable biomass, significantly reducing the UK's CO2 emissions. Our ambition now is to add carbon capture and storage on top of our power station, which will turn us into a negative emissions company. We actually expect to remove more CO2 from the atmosphere than we put into it. In fact, each one of our units could remove 4 million tons of CO2 from the atmosphere every year. In the UK, the Climate Change Committee believes that the UK will need between 50 and 75 million tons of carbon removal per year by 2050 in order to get to net zero. And at Drax, we could provide eight or even 16 million tons of that. We hope to be ready to build in 2024 and to be up and running in 2027. So we think we can play a very significant role in helping the UK get to net zero by 2050. So as the world tries to move towards net zero, we need to find things to either use CO2 for, or we need to store it and sequester it permanently under the North Sea or under the floor of the ocean. And Drax has created an incubation hub at our power station, where we're working with different partners, looking at different ways of doing that. So the first thing we're doing is we're working with different carbon capture companies, or companies that have solvents that can actually capture CO2, companies like Sea Capture companies like MHI, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, to trial their solvents on our flue gas to see which is the most effective at doing carbon capture and storage with bioenergy. So that's one form of collaboration. The other thing we're doing is we're working with startup companies like a company called Deep Branch Bio, which is looking at using CO2 to do innovative things. So for example, they're using CO2 potentially to make you know, protein substitutes for animal feed or for fish feed. Right? And over time, we think there's going to be a very interesting role to play for our biogenic CO2. So for example, if you combine biogenic CO2 with green hydrogen, you can make synthetic fuels that can work in aviation. So we're starting to work with other companies to look at that kind of opportunity as well.